I would like uh, to invite uh, James Gaffey from uh, Manchester uh, Technology University from Ireland. Uh, James will tell us more about uh, green refinery opportunities for agriculture. The floor is yours. Thanks, Magda. Um, thanks for the invitation to participate. So I'm going to talk about green biorefinery opportunities for agriculture. I'm based in Ireland. I work at Munster Technological University where I lead a research group called CERC Bio. We work on different bioeconomy uh, implementation projects. Um, a lot of these are working alongside primary producers and trying to have a practical impact um, within the bioeconomy. Um, I know Peter is going to talk in a little while about this uh, other project called Mainstream Bio, which we collaborate with Peter and Magda on, uh, which is a sister project of Bio Rural. And uh, this project is working to implement small scale bio based and nutrient recycling solutions in seven countries across Europe, including in Poland as well as Ireland. Um, and there's a toolbox and a range of supports being developed, but I won't talk much more on this because I know it's been covered later in the uh, seminar. So my main focus is to talk about the green biorefinery opportunities for agriculture. So a biorefinery, some people will know what it is, and some people won't. Essentially, it's a, it's a factory uh, for processing biomass of different types into different types of materials uh, like protein, like uh, fiber, like chemicals. Uh, as well as energy in an integrated, sustainable way. And within the concept of biorefineries, there's a subset of biorefineries called green biorefineries, which focus on different types of green mass, biomass, um, typically uh, different types of grasses, uh, fresh grass and silage, uh, legumes, and different types of, of crop residues with, with, for example, high protein content. Uh, if we look at, at grass, I, I think it's a really a uh, big opportunity for Europe. It's uh, uh, permanent grassland. It, it covers approximately 34% uh, of uh, utilized agricultural area and 14% of, of total uh, land use in the EU 28. Uh, a lot of uh, countries, in fact, uh, 23 of uh, the EU 28 countries have over 20% of their arable land in the form of permanent grassland. And if we look at uh, Poland, you can see that over 20% uh, of land is in the form of grassland. So for a lot of European countries, grass is a huge resource. It's often been used for uh, ruminant nutrition, uh, but there are a lot of opportunities through this green biorefinery process, as I'll try to explain, to improve the usability of grassland. And this could be a huge opportunity for rural development in Europe. And just to talk a little bit about the uh, challenges that agriculture uh, faces, um, which could potentially be, be um, somewhat alleviated, I think, by the green biorefinery model. Um, the, a lot of EU countries are coming under pressure uh, in, in their agriculture sectors uh, in terms of decarbonization. It, all sectors are having to deal with it, and agriculture is no exception. So even though uh, agriculture is hugely important in terms of um, uh, rural economy, in terms of provision of, of food and, and uh, nutrition for communities. Uh, it, it is also under pressure to try and find more sustainable pathways uh, for its production. Uh, if we look across the European Union, EU 28, you have about 10% of emissions which, which come from agriculture. Uh, if you look at Poland, it's around just over 9%. Uh, Ireland is on the extreme side of this with over 30% of our greenhouse gas emissions uh, coming from agriculture. We have a very large ruminant sector and we don't have a lot of he heavy industry to try and dilute uh, those emissions. So a lot of it gets uh, attributed to, to the agriculture sector. Uh, if we think about the, uh, the pressures that this brings, uh, a lot of member states are now introducing different sectoral targets uh, and, and some of these are, are being, uh, being uh, transferred to, to the agriculture sector. So, for example, in, in Denmark, there's a target to have greenhouse gas emissions in, in agriculture by 2030. In Ireland, the target is 25% is of emissions. So, farmers are, are feeling the pressure in terms of the, the climate challenge. 
Uh, if we look at uh, another challenge we face in, in Europe, and it's come up at the kind of uh, European Commission level, is the idea of trying to find more sustainable sources of protein. So MEPs recently voted in favour of a proposed uh, protein strategy. So this is, uh, in effect, trying to uh, make Europe more resilient uh, from a protein point of view for, for human nutrition and animal nutrition, uh, and to uh, reduce the amount of imports which are coming into Europe uh, in the future. Uh, if we think about the protein that's been imported into the EU uh, from an animal feed point of view, we import about 17 million tonnes of protein feed, and about 13 million of this is in the form of, of soybean meal, which is a huge input to, uh, for example, cattle concentrates, diets, uh, the pig feed sector, the, um, the poultry sector, and Europe is only about 3% self-sufficiency when it comes to uh, soybean meal. And soybean meal itself is often transferred from uh, different parts of the world where the transport itself brings a lot of environmental impacts, but it's also associated uh, with lots of other uh, land use changes, uh, often in terms of its production, which can have a big uh, impact as well. So while member states, uh, including Ireland, are looking at different uh, native ingredients like beans and peas and lupins and different products which could potentially fill this gap. Uh, the potential to harness protein from grasslands, I think, is currently uh, underutilized. And through the, the green biorefinery model, there is a, a big opportunity to improve the utilization of, of protein that's contained within grass. So uh, the grass biorefinery approach is essentially um, about taking in uh, different types of, of green biomass, um, like grasses, potentially clover and other legumes, uh, different types of crops like, like sugar beet leaves, and being able to process, process these to extract out some of the protein. So some of the work we've been doing in Ireland in collaboration with a cooperative called Carberry, who work with dairy farmers, a pig cooperative with Barry Roll, who are working with pig farmers, uh, as well as a company called Grassa, has been working to demonstrate technology uh, to try and remove some of the protein in grass uh, to essentially uh, free up or unlock some of the protein for other uses other than what is currently the use, which is mainly it's, it's completely fed to cows at the moment. Uh, so what we do is we press the uh, fresh grass to extract out about 60% uh, of the protein into a fiber fraction, which is then uh, baled into silage and can be used as, as ruminant feed. Uh, from the pressed juice, then we're able to extract out uh, a number of different uh, products. So from the pressed juice, we can take out this uh, dark color material in here, which is a protein concentrate, which can be fed uh, to monogastrics. Uh, we've also been able to extract this uh, sugar component here, which is uh, a short chain fructooligosaccharide concentrate, which can be a high value uh, nutritional product for, for humans and for animals, and a residual stream, which can be used for the production of bioenergy and biogas. And so this is a, a different approach. It's around uh, trying to harness and unlock the protein in grass. Uh, and try and uh, take out some protein that we can feed other animals who wouldn't be able to access protein in grass. So we've been trialing these different products uh, with the co-op involved and, and looking at how we can uh, create these new products, test these new products and how they compare with uh, products that, for example, farmers are currently using at the moment. Uh, so we've been able to test our, our press cake silage that we've extracted from the refinery as an alternative feed uh, to uh, traditional silage um, and to understand its impact in terms of uh, dairy cow nutrition. What we've seen is that, as you can imagine, we extract out some of the protein. So the overall protein level that's contained in our press cake is actually lower than that contained in, in grass silage. Uh, but what we find is that because of the refinery process and the opening up of the grass and the type of protein that's contained in the grass, the protein that's contained is actually converted into milk at a higher efficiency than the protein that's contained in the grass silage. So you get a very comparable level of milk productivity uh, that's coming out of, of both uh, the treatment and, and control batch of cows, but you end up with uh, lower losses of nitrogen and phosphorus in, for example, the feces in urine and a higher nitrogen and phosphorus use efficiency from the process as well. Uh, 
What we also find is that, and we've done some early stage work looking at room and methane impact, which for us in Ireland is a really big challenge associated with uh, agricultural greenhouse gas emissions because we have a lot of cows and they belch a lot of that uh, methane that's being produced into the environment. It actually uh, makes up about 55% of our total national uh, emissions coming from the agriculture sector. So in our early stage work, we found that we can reduce the methane that the cows produce by 15% compared with the, um, the methane that's being produced by pigs on the, or the, the, the cows on the treatment diet. But this is still early stage and would need further studies to, to kind of validate and to identify that there's a, a trend, a definite trend there. But what we find, and this is important from the co-op we work with, is that if we can upkeep milk productivity, it allows us to then investigate from their point of view, what types of other products we can produce in addition to this from uh, grass. And one of the things we've been looking at in a bit of detail has been the extraction of the protein, drying the protein we produce in the refinery and making that protein accessible for pigs. And this goes back to the soybean issue where uh, the main protein ingredient in pig diets in Ireland is coming from imported soya. So what we've been looking at is drying our protein concentrate and then integrating this into the diet for pigs, replacing uh, the, the imported soya. And we've done two trials to date based on this. Um, in our first trial, we looked at the 30% replacement of soybean uh, with grass uh, protein. And in the second uh, trial, we looked at upping this to 50%. And you can see over time, the, um, the fruit protein of the different uh, samples we've been producing has also been increasing, which has made this increase in, in replacement possible as well. So uh, the more recent uh, batch that's been produced of grass protein is around 43%. And as a reference, soybean is in or around 44 to 48%. So what we've seen from the trial is in replacing uh, the soybean in both diets, we found uh, working with nine week old wieners, uh, we found that the, uh, tr the treatment diet or grass protein was consumed at a higher level compared with the control batch. We have a, a general uh, a comparable performance in terms of feed conversion uh, ratio, and we actually have higher weight gain in the case of the pigs who are on the treatment batch by the end of the trial compared to pigs on the control batch. So this is positive um, and working with the pig farmers that we've been working with and the co-op we've been working with, it's, uh, they're, they're starting to feel that if we could get this product available uh, on the market, it would be a preferable uh, source of, of um, protein for them within the diet compared with soybean meal uh, from a sustainability point of view. We've also been looking at this kind of cascading approach. We, we look at the brown juice that's produced from the process or the grass whey and looking at the extraction of high value ingredients uh, from these. Uh, we've managed to extract this uh, sugar product, which is a short chain fructooligosaccharide. Uh, we get about 10 grams of this uh, phos concentrate for every liter of, of whey or brown juice that we uh, produce. And we've been assessing this as a potential prebiotic product. So this would be a food source for probiotic or good gut bacteria. And we've been doing some comparisons of this uh, at a lab scale with some of the commercial based FOSS products which are on the market. And so far we're finding in terms of, of a, a carbon source, it seems to be uh, very good for the promotion of these healthy gut bacteria in animal and human uh, cell models. So this is something to be explored. Uh, we do think it will make a big difference to the overall economics by having this extra product uh, coming up out of the process, even if it's relatively uh, small volume, it's high value, and it adds a lot um, when, we, when we consider it within the business case. Uh, we're also looking at the uh, integration of the process with uh, anaerobic digestion to produce biogas. So in Ireland, there's a bit of a consideration around diversifying grassland to produce biogas, whereby grass silage would be used for anaerobic digestion. What we're uh, trying to explore is if we extract different products and then integrate it with anaerobic digestion, what's going to be the overall uh, environmental benefit. Um, and we've done some early stage work looking at this. Um, we find that on a, a dry matter basis, the performance of the, the liquid residue coming from the process, it, it digests very quickly. The biomethane productivity 
and the biogas generation is quite high, but on a fresh waste basis, it, it's quite uh, a lot lower uh, because a lot of the material has been uh, extracted out. So it's, it's lower than if we were to compare it to uh, grass silage, but we still find by recirculating this into the process, we actually meet a lot of the energy requirements uh, from our process. So based on the initial work we've done looking at this from an environmental point of view and an economic point of view, the integration with anaerobic digestion is a better scenario um, as opposed to, to not using it for that purpose. So it's something we're considering and continuing to, to look at in our work. And just to show you kind of the practical implementation of this, what this could look like in the real world. So this on the right hand side is biorefine in Denmark, which is a commercial scale green biorefinery plant looking at the extraction of protein from grass, which is supplied to pigs. Uh, so it's owned by a feed company and uh, the re residue streams that are coming off the process, the pressed pig and the brown juice are being used within uh, the biogas system to meet the energy requirements of the process. And then some additional energy is then exported to the grid. This is a, a different process in Germany. This is um, by BioWort, and in BioWort they look at using silage as a feedstock. And the focus here is on extraction of uh, fibers, which are then used for uh, applications like the production of biocomposites and insulation materials. And again, the juice fraction of this is is the fraction that's going towards uh, anaerobic digestion. So it's in, based on the model we're seeing, the integration with anaerobic digestion. Is, is, is making sense for a lot of these companies. Uh, a big part of work that we've been doing has been with the cooperatives and that's been really important. So um, some of our work has gone through the EIP Agri initiative where we've been able to bring the technology to the farms and work on it with the farmers to show them uh, what we can actually produce from grass. Uh, this has been really helpful in terms of uh, knowledge transfer and exchange. So from our point of view, talking to them about the technology, the products, showing them how, how everything works, but also it's a really good model for getting feedback from farmers on practicalities of implementing uh, certain innovations where things that we think might work, we, we get feedback and we find out it might be more complicated than we assessed uh, initially. And we've been working with pig farmers as well uh, locally in the area. And so our model would be to try and link up uh, some of the dairy sector uh, with the pig sector and create these kind of local resilient uh, supply chains, uh, which optimize the use of protein, but build on the cooperative structures that are there. So we've been working, for example, with the local mills who've been doing the compound of the feed and then supplying the feed uh, to the pig producer. So it could create new business models for the dairy farm, but also provide a solution for the pig farmers as well. And we're continuing to work with these uh, stakeholders uh, through our ongoing work. Just a final slide. So uh, in terms of the next steps for our work, uh, we've recently been funded for uh, an on-farm uh, demo scale green biorefinery and integrated anaerobic digestion unit on a sustainable dairy farm in Cork, Ireland. So essentially this is a farm that's implementing different strategies aimed at trying to reduce the emissions of the dairy farm down to net zero. So this is not just by refining, but how we manage our grass, uh, how we implement cattle diets, how we integrate renewable energy. So there's a lot of activities going on in the farm and the grass by refinery will be a new initiative that's being developed on the farm uh, to, to try and improve the overall model. Uh, we will be assessing further cascading to target sustainable high value materials and energy along with the uh, further integration with renewable energy, not just biogas, but looking at how we can integrate uh, other renewable energy sources within the process. Uh, we also want to do work to develop a continuous and sustainable uh, feedstock supply chain. So working with the farm, uh, one of the big focuses is on how we can make our grasslands more sustainable, uh, how we can, uh, for example, uh, fix nitrogen in grass by using uh, clover, uh, how we can improve and reduce leaching, for example, through uh, using uh, multi-species swords and try to look at how we can develop this uh, sustainable supply chain for the green biorefinery, as well as off-season feedstocks. And also further work to uh, scale this with the industry and implement this with the stakeholders uh, on, a, on a, a, a kind of local level, but uh, through uh, work, working through commercial models as well. So. That's some of the work we're doing. Um, it's been nice to talk to you. If people want to reach out, um, my email is here. So 
Um, and, and I'm happy to take any questions at the end as well. So back to you, Magda. Thanks very much.